All right, so this is our Phasalia strip. So uh, this, this particular test plot was planted April 15th. We're now middle of June, so we're looking right at two months of growth here. And honestly, it's pretty beautiful. Uh, the ability of this plant to flower and just produce these wonderful long kind of spiraling down flowers. Uh, it's a very fragrant flower. I, I love this plant. This plot looks great. Um, Obviously, the main focus of Phasalia and the reason people utilize it is for the pollinator benefit. The Phasalia is one of the top plants in terms of nectar producing, especially on the cool season side of things. So if you're a bee producer, if you're trying to attract beneficial insects, Phasalia should be something you're considering. Now, it's a kind of expensive plant. You know, it tends to be north of $4 a pound. So not normally planted at full rates necessarily, although in small acres, that's fine. But in a mix, half a pound, one pound, it is is fine and it's going to show up really nicely and and really express itself so yeah so flowers uh, different flowers attract different types of insects and different flower colors attract different groups of insects as well we had jonathan lundgren uh, probably one of the top uh, entomologists in the country he was here one year and he was explaining to us how you know insects can see colors differently uh, they don't see colors like you and i do but they see them differently and he says what's often missing is the purple and the blue because you tend to see a lot of yellow and a lot of white mm -hmm. uh, but you don't see a lot of purple and blue in a lot of our you know just native countryside and so these types of colors are really important for the insects that can see these best so that's why phasalia is such a great addition to these cool season pollinators cool season bee pasture mixes uh, there's there's a bunch of bees out here, you know, just really good growth. Uh, you know, Phasalia is not a extremely deep rooted crop, uh, but it's got a really fine fibrous root system and it kind of pulled them off, but especially right at the surface, uh, it has a really fine web-like uh, root structure. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the keys here is just really gonna be uh, this beautiful purple flower. I never used to think there was a lot of forage value in this. Uh, but I've heard reports back from some of my customers, particularly like up in Idaho, where they have a little longer, cooler growing season, uh, that cattle will actually eat this and consume this pretty well. So again, like Nathan said, it's kind of expensive to be putting in a grazing mix, but after this has kind of run its course, uh, you could probably turn out and get some grazing off of this if, if that was uh, a secondary goal you wanted to accomplish. Yeah, it's a great thing to add diversity to those spring you know, planting situations because we do have some frost tolerance here. So you can put it in March and April and it'll shake off a few frosts. It'll grow nicely with a, in a more diverse setting, you know, not always monoculture planted, but uh, yeah, it, it works great in any of those spring yeah. soil builder forage mixes. And one thing that we have not seen this do as well as what we wish, we can't plant this like in the fall, late summer, like August. When we plant Phasalia in August, it'll grow, but we don't typically see it really yeah. flower then. I think further south, you can probably get uh, a secondary bloom in the fall. Uh, but for northern regions, probably I-70 and north, uh, you're going to be needing to plant this in March and April to get these beautiful blossoms in May, June. And, and this is going to push even into July will. Uh, yep. for some of this. So again, if you're a bee guy, if you're a pollinator guy, this is a, a have to have in your mixes.